This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Lots of things have happened insofar as the United States under President Trump is concerned. And of course, many have heard about the not so friendly relationship between the United States and Europe, and especially Germany, and the comments back and forth from Donald Trump and Angela Merkel. And also, of course, now the most recent decision by Mr. Trump to withdraw from the Paris Agreement. But one thing has happened which perhaps has not caught the attention of too many people, something which is also extremely important in the light of biblical prophecy. And I'd like to encourage you to stay tuned until the end of this program because we are going to have a video prepared for you which goes into the possibility for you to order a free booklet which goes into these very important developments. I'm talking about what happened and what is happening in Israel. Now, first of all, here is an article by the Jewish Press dated March or May 30, saying this. Turkey has been competing with Jordan over influence among Arab residents as well as over control of the Temple Mount. Turkey has begun pouring millions of dollars into NGO in eastern Jerusalem. The growing involvement of the Erdogan regime shows that the Turkish actions in Jerusalem are part of a wider process. Earlier this month, Erdogan slammed Israel for massacring the Palestinians, calling on the Turks to visit the Al-Aqsa Mosque and dubbing Israel's control of Jerusalem as an insult. He also declared that all Muslims must defend Jerusalem. In recent years, the article goes on to say, the Turks have poured considerable sums of money into the Temple Mount for a number of activities, Quran reading groups, transporting worshippers to and from the mosque, Ramadan meals, renovations, and cleaning. Muslim groups on the Temple Mount are acting in favor of Turkey. Erdogan's Turkey now enjoys unprecedented popularity among the residents of eastern Jerusalem. Turkish flags are often seen hanging from rooftops in the eastern part of the city and even on the Temple Mount. Now, this is extremely important because the Bible tells you, my friends, that ultimately an outright war will break out between Turkey and Israel. And we have a free booklet prepared on that issue also. It's called Middle Eastern and African Nations in Bible Prophecy, which goes also into the future of Turkey. But today I want to emphasize more on something else. Temple Mount is extremely important because the Temple Mount will play a major role in end-time prophecies. And so will the deteriorating relationship, yes, you heard me correctly, the deteriorating relationship between the United States of America and the State of Israel, believe it or not. Here's an article by the Times of Israel dated June 1. U.S. President Donald Trump on Thursday signed a waiver that delays for six months any plan to relocate the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, disappointing the Israeli government and backtracking on a key promise he made on the campaign trail throughout 2016. A 1995 law mandates the relocation of the embassy, but provides the president with the prerogative to postpone the move on national security grounds. Each of Trump's three immediate predecessors, Bill Clinton, George Bush and Barack Obama repeatedly exercised that right. They had to do it every six months. The most recent waiver signed by Obama expired on June 1. Without its renewal, the U.S. government would have been legally obligated to proceed with moving the embassy. And then it goes on to say that moving the embassy to Jerusalem would be seen as endorsing Israel's claim to the city and rejecting the Palestinians, because the thought is that 
Once you put the embassy in Jerusalem, you say, okay, now Jerusalem is the capital of Israel and the Palestinians want at least part of Jerusalem as their capital for a Palestinian state. And so the U.S. backpedaled, saying, okay, if we do this right now, we are going to jeopardize the peace process. Now, of course, Israel's position is that now has jeopardized the peace process even more. In a follow-up article, the Times of Israel wrote on June 1, Trump once again publicly disagreed with the Israeli government. The first time was the administration's request to rein in settlement construction. Now the waiver emphasized the sharp difference in how the White House and the Prime Minister's Office in Jerusalem view the dynamics of the Israeli-Palestinian peace process. You might as well forget that. It's not going to happen. There's not going to be a peace process. Benjamin Netanyahu has clearly said, Jerusalem is supposed to be undivided. It's the eternal capital of Israel. We are not going to allow anybody to divide it. He is completely against the concept of a two-state solution where the Palestinians have part of East Jerusalem as their capital. Now, Mr. Trump has backpedaled and has gone back and forth on that issue. And now, of course, many have said this is a very disappointing step, especially evangelicals have strongly criticized Mr. Trump, saying, you have made that promise. You have made the promise, actually, that on the first day of entering office, you will move the embassy to Jerusalem. Now, technically, that wasn't possible. You had to, first of all, wait until this other law would come to the point where either it was signed again as a waiver or it was supposed to go through. But in any event, that was a promise. Now, the promise has been backtracked. It has probably been revoked. There is not much of a chance, actually, at this point, and nobody seems to be leaving it, that ultimately the embassy is still going to be moved to Jerusalem. Because, you see, the relationship between Israel and America is prophesied to deteriorate. And our free booklet, which we are going to introduce to you in a moment, the fall and rise of the Jewish people, tells you more about this. It also tells you about the fact that Israel will build a temple on the Temple Mount prior to Christ's return. Now that is going to cause chaos, confusion, uproar in the Middle East and around the world. You can, I believe, easily see that to happen. And this will bring into motion a cataclysm ending in the Great Tribulation, ending in the return of Jesus Christ. But before Christ returns, a lot of terrible things must happen, as the Bible clearly prophesies. Now, therefore, stay tuned for this memo and for this video and for your opportunity to ask for this free booklet, The Fall and Rise of the Jewish People. And until next time, this is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Where did the Jewish people originate from? Are most of the modern descendants of the ancient house of Israel Jewish? If not, who and where are they today? Does the Bible prophesy a third temple in Jerusalem before Christ's return? Does the throne of David still exist, and if so, where could it be found? What is the abomination of desolation? Who is the man of sin claiming to be God? And what is the red heifer ritual all about? Why have so many Jews rejected the Messiah, Jesus Christ, as their Savior? What is the true history of the Jewish people and what is their prophesied future? To find the answers to these and many other questions and to receive a free copy of this booklet, go to eternalgod.org slash contact or click here.
Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.